welcome to Reunited with Christ Ministry, 2505 Midway Avenue. For all you out there in Facebook land, Instagram, wherever you are, we are opening the doors to welcome you to come and fellowship with us this morning. Hallelujah. Oh, Father God, I just thank you. I thank you for being my Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, to God be the glory. If you weren't in Sunday school this morning, hallelujah, you missed an awesome word, an awesome teaching. Oh, God is good. God is good. And so one thing that I want to say, prepare yourself for the coming of the Lord. He's on his way back. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, to God be the glory. I want to say this morning, we are on holy ground. Yes. Hallelujah. And God is so good. So good. Last night, you went to sleep. And the ministering angels were encamped about your dwelling. Hallelujah. Because God loved you so much. Hallelujah. That he allowed you to see a day. Hallelujah. That was not promised to you. Oh, God is good. God is good. Hallelujah. So we're going to go ahead on and get this party started in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. So we're going to start with the song. Hallelujah. Just opening up the door to let the Holy Spirit come in and have his way. Hallelujah. We're going to say, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you,
good. Hallelujah. Oh, we can just thank the Lord. Just keep it praying. Because you know, everything that God did for you, He didn't have to do it. But because God is love, hallelujah, He continues to pour it out upon us. And I just want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We will now have our old and new testament reading. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Father, Lord God, we just want to give you praise and give you glory for every man today, God. 
God, we pray for the men who are outside of your word, God, that they will stand back up and get inside the word. God, we pray for those that are on the corners, God, that you will keep them safe and protected. Oh, God, look on the fathers that are pulling the wagon, God, and carrying the load, trying to be the best father that they can be, God, under the fire, under the circumstances. But thank you right now, God, for creating a way out of no way for them right now. Thank you, oh, God, for being the rock in the weary land, oh, God. Thank you for being their refuge in a time of storm, oh, God. Oh, God, we just want to thank you right now, God, as you begin to start touching the men right now, God, calling them by their name, oh God, that they would get up and come back to you, oh God, and those who never return to you, God, those who never come to you, God, we pray that you will create an avenue, God, that they will come unto you saying, what must I do to be saved? In the mighty name of Jesus, touch them right now, God. Heal them right now, God. Set them free right now, God. Deliver them right now, God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, help that man to have his integrity, God. Help that man to walk in his character, oh God. Help that man to walk in his purpose, oh God. Help that father right now, oh God. That father that's going through all kinds of things, oh God. Help him right now in the name of Jesus. That God, he will stand up and be the man and the priest of the house. That he will stand up and be the husband of the house. That he will stand up and be what he needs you, you need him to be right now. In the name of Jesus, oh God, help that man and help that father right now, oh God, that God, they won't put other things before you, God. They won't put their family before you, God. They won't put their jobs before you, God. They won't put the church before you, God. They won't put other folks before you, God. But God, they will begin to start lifting up their eyes unto the hills uh, and putting you first in their life, giving you the preeminence in their life. In the name of Jesus, uh, oh God, look on spiritual fathers, God. Look on the natural fathers, oh God. Bless them right now, oh God. Oh God, give them script where they're weak, God. Give them script where they're torn down, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Oh God, we pray for revival for the men, God. Revive the men, oh God. Revive the men, oh God. Revive their minds today, God. Revive their hearts today, God. Revive them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, cause them to live again, God. God. Cause them to live again, God. Pull them off the drugs. Pull them off the alcohol. Pull them out of the whorehouse. Pull them out of the clubs. Pull them out of the nightclubs. Pull them out of the strange women beds. In the name of Jesus, we thank you right now, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, that you will begin to heal their hearts. Heal their broken minds. Heal them right now, God. In the name of Jesus, that they will make better decisions in their life. And God will be careful to give you the praise and we give you the glory oh God in the name of Jesus and we tell you thank you Lord 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 thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Lord yeah hallelujah
want us to bow down and worship Him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
kind of started off by saying God is love. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God loved us so much that he gave. He gave his only begotten son. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to say hallelujah. Uh, Psalms 118. Hallelujah. Let me get it right quick. Hallelujah. God is so good. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. And just so you guys know, I am going to pass the mic. And I hope I don't have to call your name. I hope you're so free in the spirit. Hallelujah. You want to run up here. Hallelujah. And tell the Lord his, your favorite scripture. Hallelujah. Because it's all God's word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God. Oh God. Oh God. Psalms 118 and verse 6. Hallelujah. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what man can do unto me. Oh Father, I thank you for your word. Hallelujah. 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 And the word that I like to say to the Lord, which is my favorite scripture. Galatians 2 and 20. Hallelujah. Glory. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I. But Christ liveth in me. Hallelujah. And the life which I now, let me say that again. The life which I now live in the flesh, in this human body, hallelujah, I live by the faith of the Son of God, hallelujah, who loved me. Like I told y'all, God is love. God loves me so much. Hallelujah. He loves me more than I can say. Hallelujah. God loves me so much. Hallelujah. And to show you how much he loves me. And he gave himself for me. You can say love. But he gave himself for me. Hallelujah. 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 Father God, I thank you that you love me so much that you would give your life. For me, hallelujah. Oh, to God be the glory. Who want to run up next? Who want to run up next? Hallelujah. Don't let me call your name. Don't let me call your name. Great is thy mercy. Great is thy mercy. For them that fear him. As far 
we gonna have our pastor Bolden come on and walk the word. Hallelujah. Father God, I give you praise and I thank you. Hallelujah for your Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Come on, tell the Lord, say walk with me. Walk with me. Tell us, say walk with me. Walk with me. I need the Lord to walk with me. Hallelujah. Y'all can stay just right there. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. 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 If you help me praise him, I guarantee you we get out of here. If you just help me praise him, I guarantee you we'll get out of here. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless the name. Bless the name. Bless that wonderful name, Lord. There is no other name I know. The Holy Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Bless that wonderful name of Jesus. No other name. Come on in, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. You ought to just bless that wonderful name of Jesus. Come on in, bless that wonderful name of Jesus. There is no other, no other name, no other name, no other name, no other name.
the ones that was bringing you not even here. But the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. You know what? Got joy in my soul. God is in control. I got Satan on my trail. But I'm singing all this way. He's a Get you a 
piece of good luck and you feel like that you can't obey God. Well, where are you when she died? Where would God be then when you want God and God say, now I'm tired of this woman being your God. I take her life. Now let's see if she's God enough to raise herself from the dead. Satan don't mind using obstacles that God put you through to get you to get mad at the situation that God is taking you through. Let me say that again. He don't mind using those same obstacles that the Lord is taking you through to get you to feel that it's God that's being totally unfair about why you're going through what you're going through. But the Bible says there is no searching of the Lord's wisdom. Okay, okay. Neither is there no searching of his understanding. Yeah, yeah. Isaiah said it like this. My thoughts and your thoughts are not the same. Yeah, right. The things that you think on God ain't even yeah. totally concerned about. Come on, come on. Because God's thoughts is this. Yeah. Once I bless you, yeah. now you need to praise me. Yeah, Once I bless you, yeah. now you need to serve yeah. me. That ain't God's thoughts. I just want to see how many would agree to that. Let me tell you God's thoughts. These are God's thoughts. Before I bless you, I need to know can you praise me? Before I bless you, I need to know can you serve me? Because if I don't give you nothing but just life every day, can you still say God is good? Y'all ain't talking to me up in here. know that God is good and that his mercy endure forever. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Let's go over to the Romans, if we will. One thing I learned about Satan is that Satan loves to trouble the people of God. Yes, he does. And if you're not careful, Satan will trouble you so bad and make you think that other things and other people is the problem. Yeah. And really the problem is you. Yeah. You are your own problem. Yeah. I've questioned how can a person walk with God and experience God on a level of seeing God give you life Watching God heal you over and over. And then you can just so easily walk away from God. I question that. Because what makes you look bad is that only hypocrites believe your God. But those who are born of the Spirit of God can see between your lies. Any person that says, I walk with God, I talk to God, I experience God. And then watch this. You know he delivered you time and time before. Then I'll give you ever more reasons to stick with him. Because if he did it then, somebody help me right now. He'll do it again. And if he do it again, he'll do it again. And if he did that, he'll do it again. Matter of fact, somebody say, give me Bible. He said, I do exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ask or even think of according to the power which working in you if you got enough power to just praise him you got enough power to worship him if you got enough power to extol him if you got enough power to give him glory if you got enough power to give him his honor you got enough power to boast about him boast in your infirmity give him praise in the midst of your trial give him glory in the midst of tribulation guess what he said Don't justify me. It's my faith. 
What profit me to preach to you and then yet I'll be the castaway? What profit me to tell you God can deliver you, but then in the midst of me going through, I'm bound because God won't deliver me. Come on. And I can't believe him. The devil is a liar. Come on, somebody say, preaching, you better walk it like you talking. And tell them you better talk it like you walk it. Yeah. Tell them both of them better stay lining up. Because there are some times that even preachers don't want to talk what they want. There are some times when even preachers don't even want to walk what they talk. Come on here. Some days I just wish I could roll up in the bed and just stay in the bed. But that's something on the inside that begin to work on my outside. Begin to say, get up and do what you're called to do. Go forward. Don't worry about who with you. Don't worry about who's against you. Because if God be for you, who can be against you? And don't I host a camp around.
backslide? Oh, y'all don't hear me do it. It's easy to backslide. And the longer you stay back there, it's hard to come back. Because Satan keeps throwing so many advertisers out there. And appetizers. But God say, only put down the seat. You got to find the seat. And when you find the seed, you got the key. By whom also we have access. Here it is again. By faith. Into this grace. There's no grace without faith. You got to have faith. In order to obtain his grace. Because there's a difference in him just being gracious. And his grace. There's a difference right there. Him being gracious meaning he could have destroyed you. But he did. But his grace is this right here. That when death come to you. And then the word say you shall not die. But live. That's God's grace. That's that unmerited favor. That's that stuff you don't deserve. But he still give you in spite of. That's when you fall short of his glory. But he still forgives you in spite of. Y'all ain't talking to me. And the world don't get forgiven in spite of. Only the church get forgiven in spite of. That's why he called it. Is that? Is that you don't know like I know? 
what the Lord has done for me. You can't tell it like I can. How he brought me through. Oh, why would I be afraid of the sudden terror by night? Or the pestilence? What should separate me from the love of God? Should tribulation? Distress? Persecution? A peril? A sword? No angel? No height? No death? No principality? No darkness? No nothing? No Satan transforming himself as an angel of light is going to separate me from the love of God. Not me even falling short is going to separate me from the love of God. What should separate you? Uh, now, glory, tribulation, work patience. And patient experience. That's what's wrong. People have been asking God for some experiences. But be patient because it's coming. See, tribulation has to come first. And then you got to start knowing why it's there. Because not everything is there because you've done some wrong. Some things is just there because God is using you as someone else's interceptor. Because if God can put it on you and you can handle it. But if he put it on them and they can't handle it. But yet they watching your life. And God say because they watching you. I'm going to give you their battle. And I'm going to let you show them how it is to stay strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And I'm going to let you be the reason behind the fact that they're going to be able to come through. Because when people watch your life they don't tell you. They don't tell you they're watching you. They start drawing from you. I wish I could preach to you here. They start drawing from you. And when folks start drawing from you, and you start feeling a little weakness, you better know who you connected to. And because you connected to them, that means that they're pulling on you now. They're not pulling on you to pull out of you. They're only pulling on you to help pull them through. Y'all ain't talking to me up in here. So when folks is trying to come around you, they're pulling on you. When people come back into your life, guess what? They're pulling on you. That means that there's something that you have inside of you that you have not opened up yet and let God help you through it. That means that you got something on the inside of you that God said, I put in you and it's a secret weapon. And until you identify with what that secret weapon is, watch this. With the most, the more time they keep coming, and the more they keep coming, watch this. That's when the ministry and you start to come alive. I wish I could talk to you here. The ministry will come alive. Can I preach like I feel it for a minute? When the ministry inside of you come alive, watch this. Then you'll find out if they with you or if they are against you. Because as you pulling on me, either I don't want you to pull on me, and then you pull through, and then you walk away from God. No, because I might be your last. God, stop. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Come on, come on. Come on. Yeah, like talk to me. Come on. Let me help you understand some of what Jesus told them. Yeah. Jesus came into their life. Mm -hmm. He told Peter, he said, follow me. follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Uh -huh. Peter dropped his net, him and his brother Andrew, and they followed Jesus. Yeah. Watch this. They came to a place and they was on the shore. And the river was out there in the open. The waters were boasting. Uh -huh. Lightning and thunder. Yeah. Water beating badly up on the boat. Wind boasters. Uh -huh. And all of a sudden, here comes Jesus walking on the water. On, Peter had to reflect back on that follow me part. So he said, Lord, if it's you, bid me to come. Yeah. Jesus told him, come. Uh -huh. Peter realized he was sinking. He said, Lord, save me. I'm going to stop right there and say this. We know when we all are sinking. Yeah, yeah. That's when we need to say, Lord, save me. Because if not, if we don't ask God to save us, watch this, we start losing access. Yeah. And when you lose access, you start dropping out in your faith. Yeah. Yeah. Because now you're not trying to... Well, Peter had enough faith to know that if he said, Lord, save me, he was going to get saved. Yeah, yeah. So he said, Lord, save me. I mean, come on, let's talk real, real, for real over here. You should not want to have a testimony because you left the church for 30, 40 days, uh, 30, 40 years of your life, and then you come back in and want the church to still receive you as you the same. Come on, talk to me. You get your testimony. Oh, I'm going to be real. You get your testimony when you stick with God in spite of whatever you go 
through. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Watch this. I ain't talking about leaving no church, meaning the uh, the body, meaning the book. I mean the uh, the uh, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm coming your way, giver. I'm not talking about leaving the church, meaning that you leave the building. Yeah. But I'm talking about leaving the church meeting. You just put God aside and you walk away for 30, 40 years. And then you come back and say, Lord, I really need you now. This is the time I need you. Wait a minute. Let me help you understand something. While the blood is still yet running warm in your veins, while you got the activities of your limb, that's the time you ought to give God praise. So when you get in your old age, certain things won't hit you. Come on, talk to me, somebody. When you get in your old age, diabetes won't creep up on you. Come on, hear somebody. And you get so surprised about it. Come on. Cancer won't take over your body. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You'll be just like G.E. Patterson. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You can have cancer in your body, but cancer don't have you. I wish I could talk to you up in here. Come on, talk to me, somebody. You can preach the Bible and still walk the word. You might don't have all your script, but you still got enough to give a word of God to somebody. Being justified by faith. Being justified by faith. You got answers. Wherein we stand. True relation, work, patience, patience, experience. Experience hope. And hope make not a shame. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely a righteous man will one die. Yet preventure for a good man, some wouldn't even dare to die. Some wouldn't even dare to die. But God commanded his love toward us in that. While we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. I want to end this by saying this right here. You're no longer a sinner. So stop practicing sin. Christ done already died for you. When you accepted him, you no longer was a sinner. When you accept him, see a saint and a sinner can't be the same. I could talk to somebody here. See, a saint get forgiven. A sinner has no forgiveness until the sinner, first of all, repent of his sins, and then you got to come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ that He is the only one that can forgive you of your sins. But I'm not looking at people these days, and I'm saying everybody is saved. No, the devil is a liar because there are some folks that can sound the part, dress the part, look the part, walk the part, talk the part. Come on here, somebody, but they ain't a part of the part. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me up in here. We walking by faith, yeah. not by sight. Yeah. Preaching the gospel won't be popular in a few more years. Huh. Preaching the gospel is going to be something we're going to go to jail for. Huh. Oh, yeah. When you preach the uncompromising gospel. Yeah, yeah the unadulterated gospel. Yeah, that burden of the word of the living God kind of gospel. That's the gospel that's going to get you in jail. When you start telling people to repent of their sins, yeah. change your ways. When you even tell folks that's deacons and that's preachers, that, uh, deacon, you alcoholic, you're not called by God if you are drunk, deacon. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Got four, five wives. You can't be the apostle. You can't be the pastor. You can't. Y'all ain't going to talk to me up in here. Come on, talk to me, somebody. Because why? That kind of gospel there is this book. Jeremiah chapter 3. God said he was going to give them pastors after his own heart. Meaning there are some pastors that God despises. That ain't not the God's heart. Anybody can go open up an a edifice. And anybody can go and get some license and store something. Collect your money. And be happy about telling you something. Long as it's good, people run to it. But when it's sound doctrine, people run from it. But the Bible tells us we got to get back to preaching this sound doctrine. Yeah. Because guess what? It will stop those from having itching ears and heaping unto themselves seducing spirits. Yeah. Because that's what's going on in these days and time. Uh -huh. Everybody want to run to that sugar-coated stuff that sound good. Uh -huh. 
They want to run the straight to, to, to the social media stuff and they want to bypass the ones that's preaching. Get yourself together. Get your mind right. Get your soul saved because Jesus is coming back. If he kept you slipping with your work undone, in hell you would lift up your eye. Oh, they'll bypass them messages. They don't want to hear them messages. They don't want to hear them messages that say, look, if your husband got more control over you and you let that man control your life with God, then you can go straight to hell and God will have you right there in hell and won't even care nothing about the fact that you took yourself to hell. You can't blame the man. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear. You can't let your wife have dominion over you. They don't want to hear that. When God made man the head of the house, y'all ain't going to talk to me. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear repent. Do like Hezekiah. Turn your face back to the wall. They don't want to hear that. They say, well, Jesus was full of love and compassion. But if I'm not mistaken, the Bible tells me that when they was inside of God's house and they were selling these chickens and they was dice gaming and playing all this stuff going on and selling out of the market and turned the house of God into a flea market, the Bible tells me that Jesus was angry and he was wrought and he walked inside of God's house, took a cord and started whipping them and started driving them up out of there. And what did he say? He said, my father's house should be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a house of demons and thieves. Come on, talk to me, somebody. They say Jesus was full of compassion. He was so loving. But the Bible tells me that Jesus called them people who were stiff-necked and hard-hearted. He say, oh, generation of vipers. They told me that Jesus is full of love and compassion because he died for your sins. Well, he died that you would come free from sin, not that you continue in sin. I understand the Bible when he say, wherever sin abounds, grace about much more, but I'm here to ask you, how long shall we continue in sin? I'm here to ask you, how long shall we continue to live wrong? I'm here to ask you, how long shall we continue to go on in life and say, Lord, I know I messed up, but it's too late to ask for forgiveness. The devil is a liar. If you sin, you can repent and turn from your wicked ways and ask the Holy Ghost to help you ask the Holy Ghost to give you another spirit that's not like yours but give you the spirit of God and ask the Holy Ghost to put some running in your feet that you will run away from it the next time it approaches you ask the Holy Ghost give you some pep in your step that you'll pick up your pain and run from sin. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm saved, but I'm not innocent. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I did some wrong, but I'm getting it right. I made some mistakes, but I'm doing it right. I ain't walking like I walked last year. I ain't walking like I walked last I walked yesterday. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Switch out. Old things switch out. Have passed away. Now stay there. Old things have passed away. Behold, come on, Anna. All things have been made new. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm ready to do what God called me to do. I'm ready. To walk like he want me to walk I'm ready To do what God say do I'm ready To walk right I'm ready To live right I'm ready To get to heaven If I messed up I won't give up I give it over to God Look at your neighbor And say neighbor I'm breaking times With you I ain't doing wrong you say neighbor I'm breaking soul ties generational curse I'm coming out of it hell is hot but heaven is on my mind I want to get to heaven look at your neighbor and say neighbor I'm getting to heaven I got to get to heaven I got to get to heaven my life depends on it I got to get to heaven if my wife won't go to go. If the husband won't go, you got to go. If the children won't go, you got to go. You got to get there in the land that's really flowing with milk and honey. Get there when there's no night. Get there when there's no day. Get there when the sun don't have no need to shine. Get there when there's no weeping. Get there, where there's no liars, 
so you can't be lied on. Huh? Well, there's no backbiters, huh? so they can't backbite you. Huh? Well, there's no scrutinizers, huh? so they can't scrutinize you. Huh? Well, there's no ostracizers, huh? so they can't ostracize you. Huh? Get there. Huh? Shake your neighbor hand huh? and say, get there. And tell your neighbor, huh? say, neighbor, huh? do my doing right huh? make you up mad? Huh? Do it got you upset? Because huh? I want to do right. Then tell them good, cause you can go to hell, but ain't going no hell, you can go to hell, if you want to, but y'all ain't gonna talk to me, cause y'all don't want me to preach this gospel, but I'm gonna preach it, I ain't going to hell, because somebody want me to mess up, I ain't going to hell, because it looks good, I ain't going to hell, cause she looks good, I ain't going to hell, cause he looks good, looks good. I got to get to heaven. Y'all ain't gonna talk to me. You better put heaven on your mind. Get heaven on your mind. Put heaven on your mind. Cause it's easy to miss the mark. Put heaven on your mind. Cause this world is getting ready to end. We already at the end of the millennia. First we was in the millennium. Now we with the millennia. Which means Z. That mean that's it. You better get it right. Look at your neighbor. Say, get right, church. And let's go home. Say, get right, saints. Oh, Zion. What's the matter now? You don't pray like you used to. What's the matter? Oh, Zion. What's the matter? You ain't fasting like you used to. What's the matter? Look at your neighbor. And say, neighbor.
know where I'm going yet, but watch this. Follow me. Because women been hollering, they've been domestically abused for years, but now men are the one getting domestically abused too. Because the woman said, I'm the man in this relationship. Men get domestically abused. Men get mentally abused. Men get spiritually abused. But just because God delivered you from something don't mean that it's, that's your calling to be a prophetess or a prophet. Whatever happened to getting trained? Trained how to handle real warfare. Real, for, war, real warfare is not just laying your hands on people and praying spirits and casting out spirits. That ain't real warfare. Real warfare when you are surrounded around bondage. But you refuse to entangle yourself with the yoke of bondage. But every day you fight and stay away from it. Some of y'all in here right now, you fight to stay who you are today because you don't want to be who you was yesterday. You don't want to be who you was yesterday. Don't you know we got mothers who think it's cute for their children to use profanity? Just keep laughing. You'll be the next B or H that he called. You'll be the next so and so. You're raising children. Look at the millennium. Children raising children. Oh, it's been going on for since the beginning of time, but now it's worse. Because guess why? There are no wisdom in the children that's coming. So it's nothing for them to get sick and tired of hearing the baby holler and then go throw the baby in the trash can. It's nothing now for them to get sick and tired of hearing that baby holler. And then go and poke bleach down the baby's mouth. They don't even have no connection with what they carried in their womb. Because they never was taught how to talk to your baby. How to sing to your child. How to feel your child. So it's nothing for them now. To be 14, 15 years old, laying on the operating table, getting ready to give birth in the delivery room, and then sign over their child. And then jump right back out here and give their body up again. No conviction. It's nothing now for them to say, hey, my body, my choice. I can have an abortion if I want to, and go and have an abortion with no repercussion, no remorse, no concern, no conscience, no nothing. That's because there ain't no God in them. It's easy now for a man to go out here and a little boy to go out here and just flunk himself around and make babies however he wants to and feel like he's not responsible to none of the responsibilities he's made. But when you're raising children with no Christ, it's what you want to run the world. When our government give rights for everybody to carry guns, whether it's concealed or not, whether you got a license or not, they leave it up on other folks to think like they can be responsible. When you tell a person you can, you have a right to carry your gun in a public place, just as long as it's in a holster, do you know how many people are going to run with one in the chamber and more in the clip? They ain't got it on safety. They got it already pulled back, ready to shoot. But the government done already gave them the license to carry. But leaving it up to them to even to think that they got wisdom enough to say, hey, you're going to do the right thing and let's go get yourself some license. Register your gun. Or you're going to go into a gun range and learn how to be disciplined by this gun that you carry. 
So you won't get trigger happy. That's why it's so easy for them now to get offended in traffic and then pull right up on the side of you. I, you just done got in front of them because they too busy trying to roll up their dope. And now they ain't looking at that traffic up ahead of them. So you don't want to be behind them if just in case they have a wreck. You don't want to be behind them smelling that dope blowing through your feet while you trying to enjoy your AC. Y'all ain't talking to me up in here looking at me like Alice in Wonderland. But yet and still, you go around them because you don't want to uh, indulge in that crap or have nothing to do with it. And all of a sudden, it's so easy for them to run up on the side of you and shoot at you. Yeah, yeah. No conviction. This is what the world lives without Jesus in it. This is what the world lives without Christ. No conviction. No longer are they remorseful. And it ain't just the world. It's happening right in the church. The preachers too afraid of the people. The preachers are afraid of people. Because they done got so lavish with their lifestyle. To where they're afraid to lose people. First and foremost, every preacher need to check their heart. And check the record again. These are God's sheep. These are God's people. And the Lord can give and the Lord can take away. And there are sometimes when you really anointed, you got to stand alone. You better ask Jesus. Oh, it might was two thieves on the cross hanging. But they weren't hanging in his stead. And they weren't hanging with him. Because his judgment was separate from them. They judged Jesus because they hated him for the good he did. Yeah. How you hang a man that did good? Yeah. Just because you say it don't exempt you from going through. Don't let don't let nobody tell you that that you, when the day you get saved, that's the day God wipe away all your trouble. That's a lie. They all your trouble start. Right. That's the day the devil want to hit you with stress and anxiety and worry. Mm -hmm. Fear and doubt. Yeah. Shame and guilt. Uh -huh. That's the day that he go and say, thank you. That Lord, you, 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 you gave me the book. You threw that book over there in that trash can. I'm going to go get that book. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to open that book up and make it a prison life. Yeah. Go give your life to Jesus and watch what happens. Watch what happens when you give your soul to God. Say you want to rip that soul straight out of your body. Your fight is hard. When you say it. Your fight is hard. See, I'm 39. Thank God for it. I thank God that he got a balanced preaching in my preaching. Amen. That I ain't afraid to preach it. And I ain't trying to wait till I turn 70. Amen. And you can barely understand me. Amen. Before I start preaching it. Yeah. So if you don't like me in my 30s, mm -hmm. you sure ain't going to like me in my 70s. Because right. 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 I ain't wavering. I'm sorry. Because yeah, right. if I don't make it to 70... I don't want to hear well done for real. Yeah, right now, right now. I don't want Dietrich Hayden singing it to me. I want to hear him sing. Yeah, right, yeah. And I don't want to just hear well done. Because that means I need to go one or the other play well done. Now, I want to hear what's come next. Because there's something got to come out the well done. Good and faithful servant. I'm going to take it a step further. I don't just want to hear servant. I want to hear him call me friend. Because he told the disciples, no longer are you servants, but you are my friends. For a servant know not what his master does. I want to hear him call me friend like he said, Abraham. Abraham, you my friend. Because a friend loving at all times. The master beats the servant. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. 
Because a servant is a slave. A bond servant. I just want to be a friend. God make me your friend. Because I ain't got no friends here on earth. Y'all don't hear me. I got I, I got one earthly friend. That's my wife. And she, she only my earthly friend to an extent. Oh, why he say that? So, because she got the right to say she don't want to be my friend no more. She have every right to be who she is. She can turn around and that's potential betrayal. Oh, yes. Mother Pat, don't sit here and look at me sideways. There's potential betrayal. There's potential cheating. There's potential. If, if she step outside of God, there's potential a lot of things. Same thing with me. I don't trust you. I trust the Christ in you. I definitely don't trust you. I trust the God in you. You mine for my own lawyers, but I don't trust you. I trust the God in you. Because I know I watch every day where children kill their own parents. Wherever there was no God in. And if she step out of God, I hope God don't step out of her. Because if God step out of her, she might hate my preaching and shoot me from the window. And call it bullseye. Target down, Kayla. Honey, you should have did it. I had to. I got tired of him. He kept me in church. She better pray the Lord don't raise me up. Um, Hannah, you forgive me. That's going to shock her. I killed him. They going to call me Bruce Lee Roy Green. A man catching bullets with his teeth. God bless you. God bless you. We pray. Make sure you got heaven on your mind.